Hello everybody, good day to you, welcome back. We returned to our 2007 Chevrolet V8 powered Monte Carlo project vehicle. We last left off at the end, or nearing the end of the disassembly phase. We've got a leaking power steering rack removed, leaking power steering hoses have been removed. There's the new, or the old units right here on the floor. The leaking power steering pump has been removed. We've got a new pump right here waiting to uh, be installed. Uh, I've got one of the lines run. We have the large, awkward cooler line assembly run. And uh, I think right about now, I'm gonna go ahead and start the reassembly phase. There is more to disassemble as we saw in the, uh, the first video, but uh, I don't wanna pull the entire car into pieces before putting some new pieces back on. So we're gonna go with what we know right now and get the easy stuff kind of knocked out. Uh, once the steering system is uh, put back together a little bit, we'll go ahead and toss in the, uh, a new water pump. There's a new one. The old one had no impeller left over. It was rusted to nothing. Once that thing is in, we can refill the coolant. Uh, I'll do an oil change on this thing, and then we can move on to some of the other suspension work. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good part two. By the way, if you missed uh, the part one or even the introduction video uh, to this particular uh, Monte Carlo, just go down to this video's description and there will be links at the top that will take you back in time to the uh, previous versions or previous videos on this particular car. Z Hood. Now we can see down here, there is a, a new power steering line and I'd like to go ahead and get the pump on and then screw the line into the pump because that's gonna kind of help reference the way this line is supposed to be routed. It's uh, very awkward, it has many, many bends and there's almost no space down in there to uh, maneuver this thing. So we're gonna use the pump as a reference, bolt this thing on after we thread the, uh, the line on and then we can move down and get the rest of the lines and everything uh, reconnected. I'm gonna skip around a lot through the line assembly part because it's uh, it's awkward and hard to see and uh, not very entertaining. But once we get through all that stuff, we'll move back and get that steering rack reinstalled, the new one. Now, the way I'm gonna do this is we're gonna get this broken plug out of there. See how it broke in half, we don't need that. Come here, goodbye. This pump is gonna sit on the bracket in a fashion uh, right about here. But first, before I slip it in, I'm going to go ahead and thread this line into, into the pump. But, ah, oh, my line has turned and fallen. Hang on, hang on here. I'm, I'm not prepared to begin what I was starting to begin. There we go. Yeah, see, that's, that's a real awkward tight squeeze down there. Okay, crisis averted. Let's thread this thing on. We're not going to make it tight, just we're going to start the threads. It's easier to do that while I can manipulate the components instead of uh, mounting them and then finding out that I can't uh, wiggle this thing in position or or not. Get in there. I'll hit you with a hammer. And I will. Please? Come on. What is problem? Problem is there's no space because we stopped a V8 inside of a V6 engine compartment. That is problem. I'm, you know what? My plan is, uh, well, it's it's flawed. It's not gonna work. I need to unbolt this. Love my job so much. I'll do it. Uh, I'll do it a bunch of times. I don't care. Yeah, let's try this. I couldn't get the proper angle for this dangle here, so. why it came out I know I got it I know it fits in there it came out it'll go in hang on here hmm. manipulating there we go got it all right uh, now let's see if my plan is gonna work or my revised plan I don't like I don't like this it's not fun for me at the moment We're getting somewhere. I don't know where we're getting to, but we're getting there. Let's put a couple bolts in this so it can't rotate. It needs to maintain its reference point and whatnot. There we go. Now, are you gonna thread? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Wiggle that some. 
Yeah, all of this stuff has to line up perfectly or it's not gonna go together. And if you bend any of this trying to get it in place, it's not gonna go together. Okay. And yes, uh, there is a new O-ring on the end of this line. I did not neglect to install it. That would be horrible. You go through all this, put it all back together, and then realize that the, uh, the O-ring's not there. Have to take it all apart and do it again. Not a fun time. Okay, that can stay there for now. Okay, let's go ahead and get this pump bolted down. Bolt number three. Put that one in there. Good. Okay, while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and get this reservoir bolted into position. That's kind of awkward and I might actually have to disconnect that pump again. It could have been a step ahead of myself. Maybe not, we'll see, hang on. Yeah. Yeah, I have to unbolt the pump again. Epic fail, no worries, love my job. A lot. So everything I just did was kinda wrong. That's cool. No worries, we'll shove it in there, it'll fit. Begin fitting now. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. Good. Okay, reservoir is in place. Let's bolt the thing back together. Again. <clears throat> well, now it's a tight squeeze. That hose is putting forward pressure on this. Oh no, you don't. Next. Got it. Okay, super. And then our 10 mil goes over here to hold the reservoir to that little uh, little flange bracket thing. Tight squeeze too. Come on. Right there. Click. Okay, that's enough for uh, up here on the top side for right now. Let's go ahead and lift this thing up some and we'll go ahead and prep the area down below for the new steering rack and uh, we'll get those lines kind of routed a little bit better and secured. All right, Monte Carlo, moving back up. Okie dokes, back down on the bottom side. Got to connect uh, one rubber line over here to the steel line that goes up to the reservoir. And then this line right here, this big one, this one runs in and down over the uh, subframe and connects to the steering gear. So let's go ahead and get this one kind of fed into position here. It's awkward, but it'll fit. I've already got the hard line finished, the diff or the difficult line rather. That one's already been, uh, been installed. Shoo. This one should be no problem. Gotta make sure it goes where it's supposed to go and not somewhere else. I think that's right about how it's gonna sit. Very good. I need to get a clamp on that return line there and then we can go ahead and feed that steering gear into position. Okay, let's get that clamp before it becomes forgotten. Don't want to forget it. Plug that guy back in. Come on. Oh, that's tight. What is this? Towel. Okay, let's feed this guy back up and clamp that line. Hmm, it's not gonna work. Different pliers. Put that guy in. Okay, clamp is secure. This is good. Okay, let's go ahead, spin around here real quick and get this uh, steering gear unboxed. Make sure this thing's in good shape. And looking good. There's our bushings. There's our unit. Very good. Okay. Let's fetch the old one real quick. There's a couple parts that need to be transferred. 
not the tie rods. We're not transferring the rods. Flip. Now we can compare and make sure this is all accurate. Let's see, we don't need to transfer this. We've got the plugs, lines, heat shield. This needs to get transferred over. That'll go down and under and around and through. It's like tying your shoes. Put that guy on right there. And of course, uh, the bushings are gonna go in there. So yeah, this looks good. Okay, goodbye old unit. Let me throw this away. Actually, no, no, there's a core on that. I have to send that back. All right, we're back in the driver's side. Steering gear assembly is coming in. We're gonna just slide it right down across the, uh, the subframe there and rotate it so it fits. And then I'll pull it through from the other side. Okay, let's scooch in a little bit. This is about to be a kind of a two-handed operation. Let me roll down over here and start to maneuver this thing in. Uh, a little awkward. Actually, very awkward. What's in the way? Oh, the everything's in the way. Ah, it doesn't fit that way. Come on, get in there. There we go. Rotate. What are we stuck on? Hoses. Hoses in the way. Got to go under the hose. The rack is over the hose. Hang on, doing it again. There. Good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I had to let the subframe down some. So I got the jack stand back in position. I pulled the bolts back out. So I, I think now I got enough space to get this to slide in all the way. I gained about another maybe an inch or so. Just letting the thing down uh, ever so slightly. Yep, here we go. Now it's uh, now it's going into play. That's good. Come on, we're almost there. Please go in, slide. Awkward. What's in the way? Hang on. Something over here jamming me up. Oh, it's the shaft. I think that's what it is. Just wiggle it some. There we go. Okay, so this rack is now roughly in position. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna start a couple, start a couple of the bolts here. Uh, we'll run this one through first. That side is the side that has the bushings, which are not installed yet. I didn't want them to fall out, so I did not put them in just yet. We're gonna put this thing in here, this bolt. That's gonna locate the steering gear, keep it from moving left or right or falling out of where it's supposed to be. We'll get that thing started. And then here you guys hold that, hold that bolt for me. Right, right there, just don't let it turn. There we go. Okay, that, that one's threaded. Now, let's get the bushings. There they are, I see you bushings. And what I can do is we'll pick this up some and stick the bushings in the hole. Oh, you can't see. So what we'll do is pick up the rack, expose that hole for the bushings, and then stick those things into place. Let's see if we can do this here. Let's move the line out of the way. That's kind of messing me up. We'll do those last. That didn't work. <laughs> stick that bushing through. Yeah, that really didn't work. Get out of here, line. We'll deal with you later. On the back side, there's the second half of the bushing push that through and then the metal insert so they don't crush hmm do I have to hammer you in no slide this guy down right there beautiful let's get the bolt through and then the, the nut on the other side of course there I'll use the threads to help there that's through and on the other side I've got the nut started and I think at this point we can go ahead and tighten down the two steering gear bolts. 
Okie dokes, wrench coming in on the back side here. Impact coming in on the front side. Let's begin tightening now. Hmm, that didn't work. Slippage. Oh, come on. There we go. And of course the uh, driver's side. Let's hit that one real quick like. Cool, okay. Steering gear is now bolted to the subframe assembly. Now we can work on getting these lines in position. So I need to reach up there and pull these caps off the steering gear. I didn't remove those earlier because I didn't want uh, fluid spilling out of them since I had to kind of twist and turn and invert this unit. Now I'm gonna do, I think this line is the farthest away one, I believe. So let me try to get that one in first. Yeah, it fits right in there, good. We'll get that one in first, and then uh, we'll get this other line over here that's kind of dangling down. We'll get that one second. All right, lines are going in. Uh, this one right here, that's the farthest away one. That was an absolute bear. And it's been about 20 minutes of me fiddling with it to get it to go and line up with the threads in the in the steering gear. I got it, but it was, it was awkward and it hurt and fatiguing. Uh, this one, this line right here, the, the lower line, that one's really easy. That one's going in, no problem. So I need to tighten these guys down and then I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and raise the uh, subframe back up and we'll get that thing bolted in. After that is in, I can get the steering shaft reconnected. And I think I have outer tie rods here for this. Uh, I don't know if they arrived yet or not. Uh, if I do, we'll put those on next. And then, uh, then maybe we can get to the water pump. Okay, getting ready to get the tie rods reinstalled. I've uh, already unboxed them, installed the grease cert. Put that right there. It's already got the new castle nut that goes with it. Uh, I have cotter pins over there on the rack arm. Just need to run these jam nuts down. I actually had to take these off of the old unit because replacement tie rods do not come with jam nuts. It's just silliness. Yeah, it's whatever though, no worries. Oh yeah, let's screw these guys on. Left side and then right side. Then, uh, oh, you know what? I don't have bushings yet for my sway bar. Hmm, those are missing. I'll get them later. Here, let's get this guy in position. That's pretty close. Come down there. Get that thing threaded like so. And we will repeat on the other side. Wander on over to the passenger side here. And again, one tie rod, one jam nut. There we go. Put that guy on. Yeah, I'm almost ready to get the sway bar in position, but I don't have uh, I don't have the bushings yet for it, so I really can't do anything else. I can't put the uh, the subframe back up into position with without the uh, the sway bar in there because I'll have to take it back down to put the sway bar back. And that's unfortunate. Let's leave that thing right inside of there for now. You stay, I'm not gonna tighten any of this down in case I've gotta take it loose again later on. Okay, we're about ready to uh, get this sway bar installed. It's got a set of new bushings installed. I still do not have the end links yet, but that is of no matter because later on those control arms are going to be removed. So. Uh, I can uh, put the sway bar links on when uh, I get the uh, sway bars, or when I get the sway bars, when I get the control arms reinstalled. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and get, uh, we'll get the sway bar in position behind the steering rack. We'll slide this guy into its new home here, get her bolted in, and then uh, we'll put the rack up permanently. At that point, we can move on and uh, get these control arms replaced. Let's just slide this thing. I forgot how I got this out of here. I think it was hard to do. Kind of awkward. Mm, do I have space? It's upside down. I don't. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I'm gonna try to raise this up a little bit more. See if I can't get like another inch or so out of it. The back two bolts are removed, and the only thing holding it up is this jack stand here. Let's see what this does. A little more. Sketchy! 
always Sketchomatic. That is the way. Okay, sway bar. Um, please go. This is awkward. It's falling apart. Oh no. Oh no. It'll be okay. Grab that piece. Ooh, almost. Oh, come on. There we go. See how we're right above the mount? Same thing on this side. We'll turn these little brackets. And now we can get this unit bolted down and in position. Okay, let's get the bolts in this thing. We'll get this side started right here. And then we'll move over to the passenger side. Look what I've done. I put these tie rods on and now I can't get uh, access to my bolt. Okay, let me untie rod this tie rod down here. Just take the nut off and move it over. There we go. Now I can reach, kind of. That'll work for now. I need a low profile socket. It kicks a little bit more. There. Okay, we have employed the ultra shallow loud noises. Ultra shallow socket with a wobble. That should get us in there. Very nice. And it, clicks. And it does get us in there very nicely. There we go. To the other side we go. Let's get out of here. Okay, over on the passenger side, we've got our strap in position. Let's get that thing kind of maneuvered down. And we'll start to drop in our fasteners here. Again, I've got to pull the, the tie rod back out because it's in the way. Okay, leave that right there. Next bolt, drop this guy in. You hear those slow motion, loud, slow motion impacts over there. I wonder what he's doing. All right, sway bar is now in position. A little bit more, come on. A little more on that one. Very good. Let's, uh, loud noises. Let's go down, you know, I'll, I'm gonna leave this off. Let's go down below, whoop, gravity, not gravity. Let's go back down below, uh, get this uh, subframe bolted back up and secured, then we'll let the car down. All right, let's get out of here. Get down below, let me find my chair, and we'll go ahead and get this uh, subframe back up into position here and become attached to the car. Oh, that's bright in our face. That's not okay. Terrible cameraman. So we'll raise this up with the pole jack. One big bolt here, one big bolt here, and then I can tighten the two up front and that will re-secure the subframe to the chassis. Close the gap. Beautiful. Okay, big bolt coming in. There we go. Next big bolt, where are you? Over here on the floor. Oop. Let's get this guy in. Hmm, is it a thread? Yeah, 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 we're going. Perfect. Okay, let's get the, uh, the post jack out of the way. Goodbye, post jack. Roll you on out of here. Right there. Up front. Oh, that's a different size socket. Hang on. We'll just retighten these rear ones and then we'll do the front ones. Loud noises. Okay, we switched out to the 19. That's the front and the other front. 
go. Oh, we can see I got the front of the cross member also nice and shiny. So we're de-oiling from all the leaks. All right, up and off the locks. Monte Carlo coming down. All the way down. All righty, back up top. We've got the new power steering pump on, the cleaned up reservoirs installed. We've got a new line. The cooler lines are done. I think next we need to tighten up this line and then we can clean up that water pump area down there and uh, get that new water pump installed next. Okay, let's go ahead and get this line tight. It's still, uh, it's, it's snug, but it's not uh, super tight yet because there was still room for some motion. So let me just get uh, a couple good snugs on this fitting here. And clicks and we're good. That line is secure. We have clearance. Everybody's on, we need a pulley later on. We'll get that at another time. Let's go ahead and prepare that water pump surface for the new pump. And then we'll get that thing bolted into position here. Okie dokie, time to clean a bunch of this corrosion off this gasket ceiling surface. I'm gonna go in there with a little bit of an abrasive wheel on a grinder. Just gonna polish that stuff off. Real light pressure. This is aluminum, so it can be very easily damaged. Uh, we're not gonna do this. We're gonna get rid of the corrosion. gasket surface is uh, clean it's free of any debris now let's get rid of the really small particles aha ew rusty coolant that's not okay the coolant is not supposed to be made out of rust we don't like that goodbye green all right Alrighty, the water pump is prepped. So I've got two bolts in it, and those are in there to secure the gasket and keep the gasket from flopping uh, out of position. So what we're gonna need to do is get this thing lined up, make sure that gasket stays in, and then uh, we'll get these two bolts threaded, then we'll go through and get the remaining three bolts. So if we look closely, we can see this little tang thing sticking out right there. And that will be lining up with the notch in the pump and the notch in the gasket. So this thing gets indexed in that direction. Therefore, this bolt here is going to go in that bolt hole right there. So let's go ahead and get this thing in position here. Lower it down. Slip it in. And I can see the top of this first bolt here. So I'm going to thread that one first. And I'm, with my right hand, I'm kind of feeling for the position on that second bolt. I think I've got it. Oh, don't fall out, don't fall out. There we go, okay, second bolt is threaded. So now the pump is indexed and it's in position. The gasket's in position. None of it can fall out. Uh, where's my other bolts at? Right in front of me. Of course they are. Next bolt right down here. I can't see the hole. I'm just kind of sticking it in there blind and hoping I make it. Nope. <laughs> Down here. Let's go. Let's get that one. Let's poke around until we find the end. Edge. Threads. That's it. Threads. We're looking for threads. That one's in. Uh, next one is that one there, and then the one at the bottom. That should be fun. Keep poking it. There we go. Made it. That one's in. Begin threading all the way down, please. There we go. And one more, and we can get these things uh, tightened down some. Yep. This one's hard because there's not much space here to get in there. Yeah, no, it's not working. Hang on. I need a magnet. There we go. We'll try to 
get that thing in there with a magnet on a stick. But uh, that might work. Come on, magnet. Hang on to that fastener. Please. It's like the surgery. Come on. Poking around. Nope. My pokes are off center. Yeah, there's the there's the hole. There's the threads. Okay. Please go here. Come on. Is that it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't fall out. Stay there. I've lost sight of the fastener here. you please go in I hope it's in I don't think it's in I think I missed the I think I missed the hole hang on right, we're gonna try a shorter socket with a little extension on it and I can go in there and maybe get a hold of that thing come on yeah 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 it's going I think I hope I think I hope. Yep. Thread engagement beginning. Yes. Awesome. Okay, torque time. Let's get in here. Yeah, let's tighten the hard one first. Kickage. Star pattern. Oh, I missed. There we go. Good. All right. Water pump installed. You've never been known in the history. All right, it is now power steering pump pulley installation time. This is gonna be real easy. We take a bolt, the inside of the shaft is threaded because that's how the pullers will install this. But we simply place our pulley over that, get the bolt threaded, and I'll, I'll run it on with a, a little impact gun. When it bottoms out at that washer, that is the fully install, installed position. And then we can move on and get the belt. Okay, miniature impacts coming in. take my bolt back I'm gonna need to put a spacer in there because I think it bottomed out we'll just use a socket actually I changed my mind I'll just use a, uh, a nut for a spacer that will be sufficient Nice. So the snout of the pump is now flush with the edge of the pulley. Uh, one must be cautious to not install these pulleys backwards because they do have an offset and they can be installed backwards. If you install it backwards, you can't get it back off because the little lip right here for the puller is not existent. And uh, you'll probably break it trying to hammer it off or you'll rip the shaft out of the pump and break the pump. So if you put that on backwards, you're, uh, you're up a creek. Don't do that. In fact, you can ride on the front of it, front. That way you definitely make sure you don't do that. Ah, also, we need to get this connector reconnected. This is the one that had all the bare dangly wires. So here, let's get this thing plugged back in. Otherwise, we'll have a, a no start condition later on, or at least uh, some trouble codes at the very least. This is good. Cool. Next on the list, let's get a new belt installed, one that is not oil soaked. It's a micro V serpentine belt. I think it's a Gates belt. Yeah, it's a Gates belt. A long one too. All right, let's uh, start with the hard part first. And I think that was the tensioner way, way out back. So we'll slip that guy 
down over the tensioner. I, uh, I've got a diagram in front of me here, so I don't, I don't have this memorized. I just, I'm, I'm looking at my diagram. So we're gonna go under that smooth face pulley, and then we're gonna go up and around the nader. Squeeze that guy through there. It's, it's a very tight squeeze between this engine and the, and the body. Very tight. Anyway, after the nader, we're gonna go down under this smooth face pulley. And then I need to unplug that connector that I just connected. The thing is in the wrong spot. Show, sure, let's try that again. Love my job so much. We're gonna release the clip. Pull that guy out. I'll route that again later. If you do that wrong, the belt will chop through the wires and that would be bad. Very much so. Under there, over the power steering. And... Oh, belt's twisted. Hang on here, guys. Yeah, it came off. Come on. Stay. Okay. Bring it forward here, and we have to go around this uh, this next pulley in front of us, the smooth face pulley. And that's going to loop around, and then it goes all the way around the crankshaft. Should be fun. We're getting a little low on space. I'll reach down from uh, the bottom and help guide that in. I need to get it past the crank bolt, though. There we go. Coming in. Okay, it's around the crank. This is good. Let's get it around the AC compressor all the way down there. Around that pulley. This one here, and we can finish it off around that uh, that idler pulley right there. This is good. Everything seems to be clearing, with uh, the exception of that power steering line. This is not good. See that power steering line? It's uh, interfering with the belt. It's not okay. Hmm. No worries. We can just flex it some. We flex it a little bit. We can get our necessary clearance. There we go. Now we're looking good. That's what I wanted to see. A straight line between the bottom of that pulley to the top of this pulley. And if I hold this thing tight, looks like we now have clearance. That's good. Better than not having clearance and sawing a hole through the power steering line that I just installed. That would, that would ruin my day. Easy to oversee too, or overlook. Or not notice, especially if it's dark. Can't see what you're doing. Oh, come on, oh, the pulleys. It's off a couple teeth here. And now it is not. Good, 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 good. I need your assistance to get this belt on. Um, let me drive the pry bar, and you, what you're gonna do? You're gonna take this belt right here and slip it under that smooth face pulley as soon as I give you some slack, okay? Put some down pressure on that. Okay. You can let go of that one now. Keep down pressure there. That way, the belt does not come off of uh, any of the other pulleys. And I'm gonna untension your tensioner. Let's see here, there she is. There's her tensioning unit. This is not the proper way to do this, but it's uh, highly effective. Do that. Hang on. Don't put your fingers between the belt and anything in case my pry bar slips. Because if it slips, then you get caught, and then yeah, that's gonna hurt. Okay, the belt is on, it's tensioned. There's clearance everywhere. It's not gonna run into uh, that power steering line, which is fantastic. Uh, and uh, let's start filling some fluids. I think we're good to go here. Okay, I've dropped the battery back into position, and we're fixing to get the fuse box back into place. I had disassembled this earlier so I could separate the harness just to get a lot more clearance. It's got uh, four primary connectors, one, two, three, and four. The three of them are already installed. This is the top one here. That's the one that runs in the body. Let's get that one on. Then we'll get the back cover back on the fuse box. Plug in uh, the extra little connectors here. I think one is for a load sensor. Um, this one, I don't know where that one goes, but we'll plug it in anyway. It goes, I think it plugs in here. And then once this thing is remounted, 
we can fill everything up, hit the key, and uh, see if it runs and leaks and overheats and all that good stuff. I hope it doesn't overheat. This is this is a lot of work. Okay, fuse box is now reassembled. Let's slip that thing back down in its home. And then there's two bolts up here at the top of the strut tower. Actually, there's one that, uh, that's gonna bolt this thing to the strut tower so it can't uh, fall into the engine. That's perfect. Put that guy on like so. Okay, fuse box is in position. Let's get some connectors connected here. And we'll tuck that all back underneath of everything and out of the way. Bend that back. This one goes to the load sensor on the battery cable right here. Snap that on. Tuck that down below. Back behind here. That's good. This is our positive battery terminal right there. Fix. And we'll get the negative hooked up later on when we're ready to start this thing. Okie dokes. Coolant's full. It's got six quarts of oil in it. I think it needs another quart. Power steering has been refilled, which will drop low as soon as we start the engine. Belt is on, batteries in, fuse box is reassembled. Moment of truth. Let's go around that corner, reach in and uh, stop things the auto. Let's see. Well, let's just see. I'm sure it'll be fine, right? Beginning engine starting sequence now. Here we go. Ha ha ha, it's alive. All right, leak check time, leak check time. Let's see, nothing jumping out. This is good. Let's see, you need more coolant. Need more power steering. Probably needs more oil, we'll get that in a minute. Uh, where is my power steering? Over there, found it on the floor. The reservoir is gurgling. We have a gurgling reservoir. Okay, let's refill some more coolant. Okay. Quiet down, power steering pump. There we go, it's got bubbles in it. Okay, a little bit more engine coolant. Fill it up. That's really annoying. I really just like power steering pump sound more pouring things. Good. Alrighty. Power steering has shut up some. Coolant's starting to get a little warm. It's expanding, so I'm going to go ahead and cap this off right now. Engine sounds good. There's no misfires occurring. The belt is not sawing a hole through anything, and we have no leaks except for the stuff that's spilling out from uh that uh that coolant cap that was off so uh so far uh, i think we're in good shape here it's coming together quite nicely uh, there is more work to do on this car because it's kind of getting a roadworthy restoration uh, so to speak but i'm going to save all that stuff for a later video this one's run a little bit long so that being said i'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now and i'll do that by thanking each and every one of you for watching this video as always i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a transmission, in a Monte Carlo, in a day.